Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I have Caitlin Micah on the show once again. Caitlin, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, good to have you back on. One of the recurring guests of the show for sure. And uh, it would have been almost precisely a year ago that we had you on. I think it might have been the last. Oh, no, we had you about your book as well. But specifically a year ago, which was your one year sober birthday. So if my math serves me correctly, that means tomorrow is your two year anniversary. Tomorrow is my two year. Yeah. 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 It's fast year. (laughs) Right. Yes. Let's get into it. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, we've talked about it a few times in, in some of our calls that we've done, the coaching calls and such is like, you know, there was a bit of a let's say a theme, but like this idea of like, okay, what's next? Or like, where do we go from here? There was a little bit of a anticlimactic feel to it a little bit with when you completed the first year, which I think a lot of people get, I think that's quite normal. And then, uh, you know, lo and behold, you had quite a, quite a year, you know what I mean? It, independent, obviously of, of alcohol, but the fact that you've removed alcohol, fill me, fill me in on like how these different challenges came up, a, what the challenges were, and then b how it was to navigate those without alcohol. Yeah. Um, I've said it a few times too, like in the first year, the focus was really on removing the alcohol and, um, what that would entail, what that would take, what that would, the effort was going towards that where the second year the alcohol had been removed and the effort was now in investigating myself and learning myself and learning what, brought the alcohol to the level that it was at anyways. Um, And that's what I really did. And I got into, you know, my past even more so than I had in the, in the two previous years and what really made me revert into patterns. Um, And I know I talked about it on the, um, our one year call, um, a little synopsis of that about that I was sitting and it felt like I was at the edge of this like black hole and looking in there, I felt like I needed to jump in there. Um, and like that, that's where the magic was or something like that. I said, yeah. and, um, I'm going to find out that black hole was definitely some shadow work, um, <laughs> and some going back into a little bit of, um, the darker side of my, you know, my path, what, what I've walked and, um, you know, the, the things that made me cringe, the things that I did that, you know, were so uncharacteristic of me. Um, those are the things that I really learned to accept and love and see the person who was going through that as what she was feeling and not what she was thinking. Um, and that was a really big thing for me. And, you know, going into, um, this year, um, 2024 and year three, um, it was just, I'm, I'm in this place of acceptance, um, acceptance of, of where I've been and of where I'm going to go and of where I am right now. And, um, yeah, it's a really beautiful spot to be. So I'm just really thankful for, for the opportunity to have looked into, you know, the black hole or the darkness and be where I am now. Yeah. Let's get into you a little bit of like what you learned, the shadow or sp- like the specifics of it, you know? So it's like, how did that show up for you? I know, I've sh- you know, looking back on your, it was, you were coming out of a stage of feeling, um, the, the sort of re like, what's the words, uh, you reap what you sow, like the, uh, you planted all this, like goodwill and hard work in that first year. And there was a degree of like, okay, I'm, I'm at this stage now. And it felt like it got challenged for you pretty early on. Right. Like I'm, I know there was a few different retreats that you'd gone to, um, and then it's just like, okay, well, perhaps I'm not exactly where, like, so let's start with that, where it's like, perhaps I'm not really where I ex- thought I was, or like, there were some challenges anyways with that. So like, let's get into that. So we'll start with that one. There was some challenges. There was definitely a realization that I was still um, depending on others um, pretty early on in that, um, or I would say early on to, um recently where I was depending on others or external validation or when someone would ask me to do something or do a favor or um, go somewhere or if someone was talking about how you know they took these steps in their life and this is how they changed their life then I felt like that was how I should change my life where I was like taking these experience of other people and um, it goes 
into so many different experiences of, of other people and I was making it mine or about me. Mm. Um, so really learning like what is mine and what is about me and what is mine to feel. And then it's, it's so funny. Cause like I took other people's uh, like either events that other people were hosting or um, emotions that other people were feeling. And I took those on as mine, but then I rejected my own emotions and the things that I should have felt or, or mm. should have um, the yeah. things that I was allowed to feel the things that I was feeling. And I would reject those because I was so confused on like what was mine and what wasn't. And um, I know that I've talked about, you know, being sensitive and empathetic and all of that. And um, I just really got like lost in, in what was me. Um, and that was more in year two. And I think it was, it, you know, that goes into the shadow work of like, from such a young age, I did reject what I was feeling and I took on what other people were feeling. And I made it my responsibility to make other people happy and to be happy around other people because I didn't want to be the one to drag them down. Ooh. Um, so I would get, you know, like sucked deeper and deeper into this darkness and not care. Um, so I think that that was a really big thing was like, I was living on this, you know, I'm not drinking in this like pride for that, which it, there was so much to be proud of, but I wasn't going back into the root issues, mm. um, the root causes. Um, you know, I've, I've said it in the past year, I might've even said it in the year going into it, but that um, alcohol was a symptom of what I was really addicted to, what my real issues were. And my real issues were the way I was talking to myself, the way I was treating myself and the way I was completely ignoring my needs and taking on everybody else's. Right. Yeah. And that's, takes people a while to get there right it's uh some people yeah it's just that's like the, i think that's the biggest challenge for me too is like the emotional sobriety piece and that generally comes after that first year and it's an ongoing thing you know perhaps for the rest of your life in some form or fashion right as it resurfaces and has these different iterations and variants you know throughout life i think that's just you know i'm pretty I'm convinced anyways, that that's how, what life's all about, right? It's like being able to do that. So, you know, one thing that stood out to me is like your first year is a lot of realizing what you're not, which is oftentimes a lot easier than realizing what you are, right? Realizing what you are is much more explorative and involves a lot more shadow work a lot of times where it's like what I'm not is already experiential. You've been based on, okay, I've done all this. I've been through this. I don't necessarily like that. You know what I mean? You can really remove different elements of your life that, which I think that correct me if I'm wrong, that, that that's a lot of year one. Right. And then year two is like this big, broad open space that has some dark patches throughout it as well. So to navigate that and really start to figure out who the heck you are, especially after this, you've more or less paused who you were from you know, even before you started drinking really. Right. So uh, as, as what you've mentioned, so yeah, interesting stuff though. Right. And, you mentioned a lot of that. I want to give uh, some time for your book. So like your book was, you, I believe you started in, in November. So of the, I guess, 20, oh man, I'm getting my years mixed up 2022. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then it was finished early 2023 in and around that same time, as far as like finished writing in any ways for, for one year and then released in the summertime after the publishing and all that. What did that book do for you? And especially in the summertime, we'll get into that the, uh, and some more challenges that you had. But specifically the book, what was that like to, um, just the timeline with that? What did it mean to you? And what does it mean to you now looking back on it? Yeah, this is um, this is a great question because the person that wrote the book was um, very much that one-year mindset person. And the book's great. The book is where I was at, the, at that time. And I've learned so much more about myself through writing the book and after the book. Um I went into basically a period of like hibernation to write that book. I would sit in my Zenden closet for hours at a time and write, and I would write, you know, 10,000 words, um, in like one sitting. Um, and, um, 
it was an amazing experience. It was a liberating experience. It was great to just get all of the stuff that I felt like had been stuck inside of me out of me um, and be like, here, read it. And whoever wants to read it can read it. It's not a secret. I'm not ashamed of it. Um, it's yeah. it's here. And here are all of the things that I've done to start the healing process on this. And um, there's so much more to it than what I put in the book. <laughs> um, and I, I know that the book was a big step forward into what I've learned about myself now. And I'll get there in a second. Um, but after the book, I, I wrote the book, right? It was like this feeling of like such accomplishment and that I had done it. And um, and then somehow I had started reverting back to my old patterns. And in summer, I was taking on way too much and doing all these things. And like, that was after the book, right? And I'm, I felt this like inauthenticity. I'm like, what? I'm not living. I just wrote a book on all this. Right. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not following it. Yeah. Um, and I've had people tell me like, you write, you write the book you need. Um, and, and that's true. Uh, there's a lot of times where I'll go back and flip to certain parts of the book and read it. Um, just cause I know that my own words will resonate and that it's, um, it's, there's something very powerful about like listening to yourself, um, and the words that you wrote at a certain time. And, um, also the book had me you know, it was, it was more so after the book that I went back into that shadow work. And I really think that the book helped me to go there. Um, yeah, sure. Because it was like, okay, all this stuff that's been like stuck, you know, like basically in my chest is out. So now we can like get down into the root. Um, mm -hmm. it was, it was a very much an unblocking for me. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, I learned so many things about myself when writing it. Um, you know, focus was really, really hard when I was writing the book. And, mm. um, you know, I say that I could sit down and, and write for hours and then I would read it and I'm like, okay, this is a jumbled mess. Like I really need an editor. So, um, yeah. so I would edit it the best I could. Um, and then I did, I had an editor publisher, um, who edited it and then I put it out and, um, the dedication in the book is dedicated to you, the reader, um, this book is left intentionally imperfect to remind you that even with flaws, we are still art because there, there was a point that one, I believe that it's true. And honestly, there was a point that it was like, if I try to make this book perfect, the way I've tried to be perfect, the whole, my whole, you know, existence as much, as far as I can remember, yeah. um, the book's never going to be done. So it's going out like this. I did yeah. it. I wrote a book. Um, since then I've had some different, um, diagnosis is one being slight ADHD. Mm -hmm. Um, so that made me even more proud of the book. Mm -hmm. Um, because I sat down and did it, um, not even knowing that that was there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, writing the book and learning, yeah, like I said, unblocking that, like allowed me to go into these places and investigate and figure out what was really causing some of the patterns. Right. And they go back so far and it's, it's not just, I learned to put other people's needs before myself. There's real reasons there mm -hmm. um, that some of this stuff happens. Um, yeah. And yeah, learning that is is just super freeing. And I really think that that the book was the start of that journey or maybe not the start, this started a long time ago, but you know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it was a big step forward in that journey because it did release a lot from me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll get into, um, it's a good spot to kind of jam on that. And then we'll get into a little bit of the foreshadowing. That's the in, in, your inner author coming in. You plant a little seeds there for our next topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. diagnoses and such. But yeah, so the book, um, and then just getting released at such a period of time, you alluded to it as well, the summertime where it's like, because obviously anybody that's created something, if do a brief explanation, if you haven't, uh, whether it's an album or a book or something, you're on the timeline before, between when you're finished and then it gets through the editing and then it gets released there's like a lag you know there, that's just the way it is right it takes two three months sometimes much longer 
to get it uploaded to Amazon or wherever it needs to go, the hard copies to get them public, you know, uh, replicated and sent to you and sent out. So it's like you are a different person, especially with the amount of things that are ha that's happening to you and and so forth. Um, you know, you're a different person by that by that point, especially if you're doing something that's like autobiographical, but also sort of a health self help book. Um, you know, and then, yeah, it's just curious that you released it at sort of the peak of all these other things coming at you and you feeling sort of, um, I guess you're getting down on yourself a little bit for reverting to some of those older patterns. Isn't that interesting that like, that's that perfect storm of everything happening. I remember I was having a conversation. You had that realization. I'd like you to talk about it. The, uh, that summertime is like not really your season, you know what I mean? And it, you, it was definitely one that you sort of imposed upon yourself that was your season. Like you wanted to be out and social. And, all that. and this was the first summer where you're like, it's no, that's, this isn't really what I want to be doing right now with all, with like all these things on my plate. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry if you heard Walter in the background there, he just I mean, chimed in. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, summer, summer again, is everybody else's season, right? Or seemingly everybody else's season. Yeah. Um, so when I was putting on this mask of a social butterfly, that's when people are social. Um, and, you know, you grow up and you get summer break from school and summer's just glamorized. And um, we're in a polar vortex here in Chicagoland. And I will take this over, um, mm. you know, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that is, Celsius, <laughs> um, <laughs> any yeah. day. So um yeah, I mean, this is a bit extreme, but you get my point. Yeah. Um, winter is my season. I love winter. I love the cold. I love the snow. Um, and just the, even that being an acceptance. I love being in my house. I love being um, in solitude. Um, yeah. I still love people. I still, you know, believe that one of my biggest strengths is connecting with people and listening to people and talking with people. Um, and I really am embracing that I enjoy my solitude. Um, I also, you know, I like spring, um, but as soon as those temperatures start to rise, it's just, it's, it's hard for me. Um, and when those social situations come up, it's still, you know, like I've been on my healing journey since 2021. So there's only been a few of those spring to summer um, changes. So that's still something that like, you know, last year, I don't think that I had the awareness of that going into it. I definitely had it coming out of it. Like I was like, <laughs> oh, I see that. Like, yeah. um, and um, I'm, I'm excited for this year because I'm excited to like go into that knowing and being okay with you don't love the heat. Mm -hmm. um, you don't love the busyness of summer um, and tailoring my summer to that rather than trying to be like, oh, I'm going to be outside all day, every day. And um, I'm going to be fine and I'm going to withstand the heat and I'm going to learn how to handle all the sun and um, sun's good for you and trying to like listen to everything that's coming in and, and yeah. trying to be something that I'm not. And And like you said, learning what you're not was or what I wasn't was a big part of it. And now it's really exciting to get to be who and what I am. Yeah. So in this perfect segue, so who and what you are, and you should I think the word discovery is, is a huge part of this last year for you. And you'd, like you said, you did discover you'd had a few different diagnoses that were more or less pieces of the puzzle, right? That just, if nothing else, anybody that hasn't gone through that, has a suspicion of, you know, ADHD or any of these different variations of different things. What was it like for you? Uh, I'm always curious with this. Was it like a relief? Was there some like sadness, like a mix of both? What were some of the pro you know predominant feelings that, uh, and emotions that were attached to uh, hearing those diagnoses? Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, there was a bit of a processing period and I think it, it showed in my demeanor um in a few different settings um at first it was relief 100 full-on relief and um i mean adhd was in there depression was in there anxiety was in there and pmdd was in there so i'll give you all of them um and um to me it was relief because it was like okay i'm feeling all these things and 
been feeling all these things. I've been having all these issues. And um, it felt like I was liberated. It felt like I was allowed to feel this way. Um, and it also felt for me, diagnoses and like, you know, personality quizzes, those types of things are, are freeing. And I use it as like mm. power once I find out, like, I'm like, okay, like this is the way that I am. So now I get to, again, get to be who I am. I get to tailor things to who I am. Um, I don't have to shame myself for being exhausted at certain times when it's completely normal for me to be exhausted. Um, I don't have to wonder why it's so easy for me to go to the gym and walk 10,000 steps certain days and go outside no matter what the weather is and feel amazing. And then in other times, um, I don't feel that way. And I, I want to be in my house all day long. Um, and you know, and, and, and not move much and maybe like dance a little bit and maybe do some slow yoga, but, um, yeah, there's, it's, it's, it's so freeing and 100% has so much to do with how liberated I feel. Very cool. It's inspiring stuff, you know, and it's like, you worked, you worked to get here, you worked to get to the stage, so, you know, and that, that it's a testament to the, uh, you know, the inner work. And like you were talking about earlier to set the table, so to speak, the shadow work that you, that you did. And, you know, anybody that's listening now, like, I think this is an important message. That's why it's, it's good to capture these types of milestones, right? Um, you know, if somebody is either sober curious or they're still in that first year, um, you know, some of the stuff may sound daunting, right? But just fr frame it as, as you would, uh, cause obviously there is, there's some uncomfortability. There's a chance there's, quite a bit of it right and 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 again i think that's this just life right we as, us as drinkers or just people that have different addictions use those to escape and avoid these types of emotions that we're talking about here but what is it what would you say to somebody that's like a little bit mm, i don't know that doesn't sound like something i want to go through like what would you say to the, the people that that are listening to that i would ask first how are you feeling right now are you comfortable mm -hmm. And then honestly answer that. Um, and I would say, do you want to be free? Because yeah, it's uncomfortable and yeah, it's, it's hard, but it's, it's the most liberating thing that I've done. And, you know, as much as I say like, oh, alcohol wasn't the problem. Like I will was using alcohol to avoid the problem. So in mm. order to face the problem, I had to let that go. I wanted to let that go at, at the point that I was at. Um, and it's, it, there are times where it's, it's hard and it's, um, it feels like it would be easier to numb it. And I'm at this point now where like, I don't want to numb it. Um, and that is, what's so amazing about it. That's what, what I would say is like, you can be free and you can be liberated from it. And if, if you're considering it because you want that, it's 100% worth it in every sense of the word. Mm, yeah. Great answer. Great answer. So we had this um, point in last year's podcast where we were like, okay, so like, what is next? So let's revisit that same question. What do you, what do you, what's alive inside you right now? What's next? As far as, you know, 2024 is, you know, we're January 16th is when we're going to be releasing this. So yeah, tell me about it. I'm really excited to live in this accept this level of acceptance. Um, it's, it's uncharted territory. So, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of the what's next, but it's, it's less of a, like, there needs to be something next. Right. Uh -huh. Um, it's like, I'm, I'm excited to see what's coming. I'm excited to see, to like live my life this comfortable with myself um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's something that i i don't know that i've done i'm excited to um i have a trip to mexico in a couple of weeks to go to mexico this comfortable with myself yeah. um i'm excited to go into summer this comfortable with myself with all this awareness like um and and figure that out you know and 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 just take everything as it comes without overthinking mm -hmm. all these moments of yeah what's coming next. Um, yeah, I just sure. read a really good book called don't believe everything you think. And it talks about how thinking is 
um, the root cause of our suffering. And um, it was, I mean, it was just 100%. And that book had a lot of uh, similar things with my book too, about how we're at our, at our normal state, love and joy and peace. And Mm. um, I'm excited to live in that state. Yeah. Very cool. That's a good way to, we were going to bring it in for a landing with the book plug at the end, where to find it. And let's say it's a great segue into the name of the book. So I'll let you uh, take it from there. Yeah. The book is called the moment you're in, um, how I found my presence in the present. Um, yeah, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on my website, clearheighted.me. Um, yeah. And it still means a, a whole lot to me. Um, I've definitely grown a lot since then. And that book is all of the, the launching pad, I guess. Um, yeah. that was a really bad sentence, but it, it, it was yeah. definitely like the launching pad into this whole new unchartered, um, beautiful, amazing, scary, awesome life. Very cool. And I think it'll just sort of gain the cool thing about books and even like, um, self-development books as it is mixed as, as we mentioned with mixed auto, autobiographically which in a sense can be self-help as well um they can they can tend to be evergreen right like as you mentioned um if you write the book for your that you need at that time there's a good chance that somebody that's the exact book they'll need and that could be like five years from now right it's like it's it's evergreen in that sense right so it's just going to live and collect this equity and this energy i truly believe that and uh one very cool thing about the book we did a collaboration with it is there's a soundtrack for it as well so i believe there's still the coupon where you can get the soundtrack for like whatever it is like a dollar or something like that yeah so you can actually like listen to this um you know it's like the new age sort of meditation music it's like they're each track is about 33 minutes and you can actually listen to it so it's actually synced up from chapter to chapter which i thought was a really cool idea and to actually turned out quite uh quite cool if i don't um if I don't uh you know don't mind saying myself so Hey, the soundtrack is, uh, I, I don't know if I can say this about my yeah. own book, but the soundtrack's my favorite part. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. in, in the sense, of course, the book means a, the whole, a whole lot to me, of but the course. soundtrack yeah. is so easy to just put on and, um, listen to and it, It's cool. Cause just the way it like coincides with the chapters. Now I like mm. get that feeling of the chapter when I listen to the soundtrack. So uh, um, I think the soundtrack for me is just one that I like go to more often than reading the words because I have that like correlation yeah. with it. Well, and plus you proofread it like a hundred times or whatever. A hundred times. So I'm sure yeah. it's like- And now like, when I read it and find those errors, like as much as we're, we're out with flaws, it still is like, yeah. oh, I didn't mean to leave that one in there. But right. Um, but hey, Imagine, that's, they're, yeah. they're real flaws. Right. There you go. I imagine it's yeah. a lot of the same kind of thing as like an actor or actress that watches the movie and they go, ah, oh, man, I would have done that scene. You know what I mean? It's very hard to fully remove yourself from the thing that you've created. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or when I listen to a podcast interview after I did it. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> hopefully you don't find anything on this one. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I, <laughs> excellent. Uh, well, thanks again. Yeah. And congratulations. Two years. Thank in. you. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really Thank cool. you for all of your support yeah. in this. It's been, oh, of it's been a, a super fun journey for sure. Yeah. And like, I think we, I caught you, I guess, four months in, right. Cause it would have been about May. So yeah, pretty, very, very cool. Uh, cool. doesn't really touch it. You know, it's been, yeah. uh, it's been very, uh, you know, complete honor of mine to, to be able to be guide you and, and be alongside you through this. So congratulations again, and looking forward to seeing what that year three, year three brings for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. We'll have you on again. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye.